If you live with a river at the end of your street, then you might expect to get flooded once in a while. But recent statistics show that a quarter of all households that get flooded in the UK are in towns and cities like Glasgow here, where the threat doesn't come from a river, it comes from sewage. Because every time it really chucks it down, our Victorian sewers, designed to deal with Victorian sewage and Victorian weather, struggle to cope. Scotland is one of the worst affected areas of the country. One of the most Heavy shocking examples of the sewers overflowing took place in Glasgow in 2002. The root cause of the disaster was prolonged heavy rain, something Glasgow has been getting much more of recently. New research reveals that during the 90s, Scotland was almost 75% wetter than in any of the previous three decades. And the bad news for Glasgow is that things are likely to get even worse. Based on our data, it's predicted that by 2020, Scotland will get more prolonged heavy rain, plus more short, sharp downpours during the winter. Jeff Aikenhead works for Scottish Water. So, Jeff, what has to be done? What we can do is increase the capacity of the sewerage system. We can build new sewers for uh, the 21st century. They'd be very big in many cases, certainly bigger than what we're looking at here. We're talking about things that you could drive a car down. It will take many years in construction and cost hundreds of millions of pounds. But it's not all down to Jeff. There's a way we can help too, by looking closer to home. A poor old car, eh? It does come in for some stick when it comes to the environment. You see, as well as being one of the causes of climate change, our love of the automobile also magnifies some of its effects, particularly when it comes to our drains. Part of the problem is that up and down the country, our front lawns are being turned into car parks which may not sound all that serious until you realise the scale of the problem. There's one. Made a nice job of that one. That's good too. A recent report has estimated that in London alone over the last few decades, over one million front gardens have been paved over. That's an area of 12 square miles. And it's a process that's been repeated right across the country. Glasgow here included. So all that rain which used to be soaked up by our lawns and flower beds is now being channeled directly into the nearest drain. But is anyone aware that this could be a problem? Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, my name's Matt. I'm from the BBC. Right. Uh, what's your name? Shazia. Hello, Shazia. Hi. Um, I just couldn't help noticing your drive. Right. It's huge. Yeah, it's a big driver. What made you decide to have it done? Is that interesting? Well, the fact that we've got two or three cars. Before there was, what, there was soil and a few... There was soil, yeah, and there was slabbing. Um, right. Just one driveway. Because we're looking at the effect that people um, paving over their front gardens has had. It's actually put a huge strain on the sewers. Right, well, I, I didn't, I didn't know that. that was, I don't think people, I didn't. No, uh, Until I started doing this. Well, if you want, I'm going to go down the hire <laughs> shop and get a pickaxe. <laughs> no. Are you okay with that? No, I can't. Just, just this that. half, just this half, we'll make a nice flower bed. We'll get Charlie Dimmock in. No, I can't. <laughs> thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you very much. You can't blame people for wanting to pave over their front gardens. It increases the value of your property and cuts down on your car insurance, but it also contributes to flooding. It's a classic climate change dilemma the sort of thing that we haven't had to think about before. If we do nothing, then your street could be the next one to get flooded. Even by 2020, it's estimated that the number of homes at risk from sewer flooding will have risen by a quarter to 100,000. That's 100,000 households for whom climate change could mean a big shock. <laughs>